So guys, I want to talk about something that's going to be fairly short, I believe. And I hope that this does not offend anyone because it shouldn't. But I want to really talk to and minister to people of color who are black. And I feel anyone of color can listen to this. Anyone of any race, I'm sorry, can listen to this. But I want to talk to black people, brown people. Because there could be a self-hate for yourself. And the self-hate comes from maybe things that you've experienced. Being dark seems to be a problem to some people. And as I told you in the past, my issues with color or my, my, the attacks of my color first came from other black people. I didn't know what it was to be too dark or anything like that. I was just me. And in my family, in my home, I never heard anything like that. I never heard my parents say that to each other. They've never said that to me. They've never said, I've never heard that around my extended family. And we were different blends, different colors, different tones, different shades. And we've never spoken to each other like that. The years that I had in Jamaica growing up, I never heard anybody call me. No one's ever called me anything. I mean, I was fairly young when I left. I was eight. But I was going to school. I remember going to school and I didn't hear anybody saying things like that. It was not common to hear that. You know? Um, It wasn't until I got around other black people, black African Americans, you know? And I guess it wouldn't be racism. It's called colorism where they were just all about their different shades of brown. But then you have to deal with that maybe within your own race, in your own house for some of you. And then you go out in society and your skin is considered to be one of offense. But who decides that? Normally the people that were doing that were people who were very wicked. They call people who were black or dark subhuman, but they behaved as subhumans. They went around just taking and killing. It is not normal to just go around and just you go to another person's country, their land, you they embrace you, they teach you about their culture, they share their resources, and then this group just decides we're going to take it. Once they get comfortable, we're gonna take it. Have you ever seen the face of a racist when they get angry? Have you ever seen it when they get really outraged how how deranged they look? Have you ever seen a video of someone calling someone just they get in that rage and they're calling someone uh, out of their name and using racist remarks? Do you see that demented look that's in their eyes, how their lips curl and snarl and their teeth comes out like they're just some sort of a wild animal. You can't go through, and I'm not saying this because I know not all Europeans, not all white people are doing, all white people did this, but this is the history to go to take over, to conquer, go to places that's already ha- inhabited. People have their way of life, but then they go and decide we know better and they they because they have they were they had better weapons and advanced um yeah advanced weaponry they were able to take over just kill a bunch of people the native americans they went through a lot of things it's not just black people the trail of tears how america belonged to the native americans the europeans came they were friendly at first and then they just decided we want your stuff. The Native Americans taught the Europeans how to survive the cold winters and all this stuff and the summers. Taught them all of these things, what they can plant. And they said, thank you. And then they took over. And they kept moving them from different places to different place. And as the Europeans continued to expand, oh, we want this. Give us Oklahoma. And now, or they moved them to Oklahoma. You go over there. We won't bother you anymore. Then they kept expanding. Now they moved into Oklahoma. Oh, we want Oklahoma now. Take it. No, get out of here. And now you, they have to go to another place. When the Native Americans try to fight against them and say, we're not leaving. They went and they killed all the buffaloes. Millions of buffaloes were killed because this was how the Native Americans 
survived. It was like their food. It was their clothing. It was all of that for them. And so there was a order to kill every buffalo to force them out. This behavior wrapped in a facade of being civilized. This, these animalistic behaviors happen. There are things going on right now in other countries. Black people being tied by their feet, hung upside down, the way you would see someone do with like a little chicken or rooster that they're about to cook later on. So the perpetual lies about black skin comes and came from a group of people who were behaving like animals while still claiming to be civilized. And guys, looking at it, the Bible says a battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principality. So looking beyond the color of skin, because again, not all not all Europeans are like this. Not all white people are like this. Not all non-black people are like this, okay? But it's a demonic evil spirit. It comes from darkness. That behavior comes from Satan to create discord, to create division, to bring down a specific group of people. And then they'll still turn around and destroy themselves, just like black people. Black people will be, oh, racism, racism, racism. But then they will destroy one another by calling each other names, downing each other, like they would say to me, for being brown, for being dark. So racism, colorism, hatred, it's not just by races, but also within races as well. It's something that it uses humanity. It's a demonic, unclean spirit that uses humanity, a willing vessel though, because the person has to be willing. There already got to be some sort of evil and darkness and something in that person that this spirit can fuse with them. So it's not like they're just taken over and they can't help it. A person who's a racist with it within their own self, with a hatred, whatever it may be, they choose it. It's not an overtaking. And so what happens is it comes from the devil. It comes from it's evil. And it perpetuates through willing participants. And so what is the deal with dark skin? Wherever you go in the world, if you're black, you just looked at like, oh. Imagine you just go to another country and you say, oh. Now, in some places, it's less, I would say in, believe it or not, even though racism, colorism might be everywhere, I feel that in other parts of the world, even though it's there, it is not as bad as other areas. I would say it, I'll say the, I'll mention the elephant in the room, like in the United States of America, racism in the U S is terrible. It's terrible. And it almost seems as if time is trying to go back to where the brutality and the massacre of black people is just okay. It can be on video and it's okay because somewhere there is a, Oh, you're going to get away with it. We'll let you get away with it. Just go ahead and get rid of these people. Okay. And while there are some other things within our judicial system that can counter those things, more often than not, you're like an endangered species in the United States as a black person. Okay. They have places where you can't kill these animals. They have places like, you know, uh, the national parks and things where they keep those endangered species there so no one can hunt and kill them. Sometimes I'm like, there needs to be something out there for brown people in the United States. But at the same time, while those things are happening, we have to be fair and balance that there are way it's not like... You can still counter those things, okay? The laws are in place. And so you just can't really just go around just murdering black people at your own leisure. But what I'm saying is there's a thin line where even sometimes within our law enforcement, these things can be happening. So what's the deal with the dark skin? What's the deal with the brown skin? 
I believe that there's something to it. Number one, I want you to appreciate yourself and realize that anything that's been said to you that's horrible and mean comes from a group that's already in their mind. They're lost, no matter how well-dressed that they are, no matter what their positions are in life. They have this handicap, which is what it is. To just believe that somebody who is built just like you with a few features different give birth, smile, laugh just like you or animals. That is a very <clears throat> stupid and just uneducated and foolish mindset. It's deliberate foolishness. Okay? So you have to realize that's a lie. The next thing that I will tell you is something about black skin. You need to appreciate Number one, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God created us. Every race that God has created is precious in his sight. Whether you're black, white, Asian, South Asian, whatever you may be, there's, there are no mistakes. Even those who are perpetuating the hate, God created their skin, their looks. It's not evil, but they choose to be evil. So you can't say the white man is evil. No, the white people are not evil. There's just certain people who choose to do evil. Black people are not evil. No, there's certain people that choose to do that. And with the media, it, they're going to show you more of the bad black people. And so you'll be afraid and you're thinking everybody is like that. But there's beauty to our skin. The most powerful force outside of gravity is the sun. And yet with our skin, we are embraced by the sun. We don't go out and burn in the sun. We can't burn. I mean, I guess if you just really stay out there forever, but our skin embraces the sun. This is a strength. The sun is the most powerful force out there. It's hot. It's glaring. It is the greatest light that there is on our planet. And it is hot. And it is scorching, but even with that, we can be out in the sun and we are not phased by it. What does that tell you? Our hair, different forms. Our hair can take on so many different forms. It's tight, it's kinky, it cannot break easily. But then if you want to, you can just add heat to it and it will just it will straighten out and it'll be long and silky. Your strength, your speed as a brown person. Regardless of things that you may have been deprived of, there are many African Americans, many other black people from other countries and cultures that have done great things despite inequalities. But embrace your skin. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of your speed. Don't be ashamed of your lips. A long time ago, people were making fun of big lips. But now, people are literally injecting their lips to have big lips. Having a big rear end was considered gross. But then there's people going out there and buying a big old butt. Being dark is a problem, but then people are wanting to get dark. Maybe not all the way dark, but they want to be darker. Music was considered to be all that jungle booga booga music. But then at the same time, as you notice, many cultures are embracing sounds that comes from black from Africa and black people
Because if you listen, I know Asian people are doing hip hop and rap. That's not their natural dance. That's not their sound. You listen to Asian music, the original stuff, they have a certain sound. South Asians, their music, their culture, you listen to their original sound, what they sound like. Nothing like hip hop. Nothing like what we do. Uh, White people, European people, their original sounds. Nothing like what black people's been doing. Those sounds, hip hop, the origins and stuff, it has traces of Africa in the music. The dance is all, is all in there. And there's no problems with individuals who are embracing that. But what I'm trying to tell you is individuals may try to say that, oh, this is bad and you guys are, are subhuman. But there, there are things that they'll take and want to be that while trying to exclude black skin or a black person. So all I would say, guys, is this. Love your skin. Love who you are. If you don't know what to do with your hair, there's plenty of stuff online to teach you how to take care of your natural hair. And what I find that really works on the kinky hair is the um, lots of natural herbs and things of that nature or shampoos and things that are really that really works on black hair and honestly guys if you check your your dna you're not all black there's stuff that's in all of us we're a mix of of different things I just want you to love yourself and learn how to do that. I know it can be hard if you've been told all your life that you're ugly and you're unattractive. And there's always been a standard of what, of what beautiful is. But I just want you to learn and know that God makes no mistakes. And embrace yourself. Ask God to help you if you find it hard to love yourself. Ask him to help you. You know what I'm saying? And again, this is nothing against white people because I know not all white people are this way. Not not everybody's this way. But what are, I would say to those of you that's not racist or prejudiced, which I know is quite a bit of you guys, what are you doing within your own race? Are you standing up for other people? Or are you a bystander? Because some of you, you're, you're not innocent. Because you're in a position to speak up and to say something and you'll sit by and listen to your white friends make racist jokes or do something harmful to someone who's non-white or your Asian friends or your Chinese friends or your Indian friends or your Canadian friends or your friends from, you know, Nepal, Tibet. This, these are, what do you do when you're standing there? Not everybody is a racist, but what are you doing? When you're faced with it with your peers, do you just keep quiet? God has created individuals like you that are not racist and not hateful, that you will stand up and you'll speak up for other people. Because while those individuals may be able to stand up and speak for themselves, your voice may have a greater impact and make a difference. And maybe more and more individuals like yourself would get up and speak up. Because what happens at the end of it all? You know, we give an account for every moment in our life when we stand before God. And the things that we did in this life, not only our relationship with God, but how we treated people and other humans is really going to matter. And I want to say this to black people. This message is not one to promote victimhood and oh, we're victims. I can't stand that. We're not victims. Things happen, but you're not victims. And please stop living a life of everybody's racist. Everybody's not racist. While things has happened, we can't ignore that certain things have happened. Everybody's not a racist. If you don't come to work on time and your boss is, he's not a black person. They're non-white and or non-black and they have to discipline you. They're not racist. If you get fired, it's not because they're racist. You didn't do your job. 
If you get evicted, it's not because you're racist. You didn't you didn't pay your bills. If you didn't get approved for a loan, it's not because they're racist. Your credit score wasn't high enough or you did not meet the, the criteria for what they for what they need to approve the loan for you. Everything is not racist because we are living in a society right now. Okay, they call it the woke society where there's constant it's this victim narrative that goes constantly on and on and it's quite annoying i will tell you that as a black person oh i'm black i'm black look what you did i'm black listen to me and i will say this to whoever there are black people who lived through times where there were lynchings where lynchings were okay they were slaves still and they were able to do well and they were able to excel and exceed as much as was possible for those times they learned to read and write they learned to do things they took the chance to learn to read and write even when there were consequences to include death times were hard they didn't have paper like we did they had to improvise they had to walk to school with no shoes they didn't have lunch all this stuff and all these things hiding and and being discriminated against and those people went and paved the way because they had the power they had the strength god gave them the ability to still survive and flourish and be resilient even under those hardships so that life could be easier for you and for me Imagine if you lived in those times. But these individuals were born in those times. And they went through some things. And we are living easier lives than some other people. I would say that, especially in the United States. There are many black Americans that are always complaining. Oh, they're racist. This country is horrible. But then another black person from another country can come to the United States and have a business. There are many black businesses. There, there are plenty of black people, brown people that come here and have businesses. There are plenty of Jamaican restaurants. There are plenty of African businesses. Plenty of homeowners who are black, Jewish, uh, Italian, everybody. I mean, I grew up in Brooklyn, so I've seen it all. So, no, it's not because you're black. While it can be, let's put it like that. While it can be, while there are some people that would try to strong arm you and say no... More often than not, you can't get an education. How is it that other people from other countries can come right up here who is who are darker than most African Americans? They come up here and they're super dark. And they can come and go to school and get a degree. And become y'all's bosses. So, even though there's racism, there's no room for victimhood. Because there's people that's coming from places where there's been genocide, they've been killed, the whole family got murdered, they were hiding in a boat and come to America and thrive. So while this stuff happens, and it is a reality that there's hatred for the skin and all of that, while I tell you the beautiful things about it, it's not so that you can be a gloating victim, but to understand not only the beauty in your skin and the wonders of it, but also that while things are going on and yes, things happen, not to live this life of being a victim and get out of these groups that's always hollering about hate and racism. Get out of these groups that's always giving excuses for brown people who are doing things that are wrong and because they're black or they're mixed, nobody wants to pay attention to the fact that they're doing wrong. It will make you look like you're crazy. It will solidify what people will consider about black people that we have we are lowbrow. We can't think. We we don't we don't make sense. We just gonna follow the group because oh they're black. Let's knuckle over there and just support them. 
They'll think that you have no ability to use your frontal lobe and your reasoning skills, that your spatial thinking is lacking because you're subhuman. And if you're subhuman, you must be trained because you can't think for yourself. So when a black person does something wrong and you're just, oh, it doesn't matter. It's racism. That is dumb and it's stupid. And I'm going to say it. It's dumb and it's stupid. And that's not a disrespectful word. It fits it. If someone does something wrong, you can't ignore what they've done. And then your reasoning goes to racism. You are stupid. You're a dummy. That is lowbrow thinking. If a wild animal went out and did something wrong, the other wild animal, a wild animal goes out, does something, goes into someone's yard and is messing with some things and the owner of the house comes out to try to shoo the animal away, the other animal is going to try to attack that man or woman that's come out to protect their yard because they don't think oh you know what um you know what we're wrong that animal our wolf our fellow wolf is wrong our fellow fox is wrong they think like animals we need to attack it doesn't matter what happened and you're not an animal There are black people who do wrong things. There are black people who lie. There are black people who spin the narrative. And I don't care how many, how much education that they have. I don't care what position they are in. I don't care how much money that they, ha- they have. And there's a bunch of angry black people walking around our planet causing trouble. And they're so angry that even if we or certain other black people say, you need to think, you need a reason, they'll attack you too. Like a rabid animal. A wild animal could be stuck in a fence and you come to help them. They want to bite your hand off because they're animals. So I will end this video by saying love yourself. Embrace yourself. Embrace who you are. Discover how wonderful and beautiful brown skin is. Think of how gorgeous it is when you go in water. You come out, you look like gold. Your whole body is like bronze, beautiful. You put lotion on your body, it's it, it's glowing. You go in the water, you see a black male go inside the water and come up and it looks like he has little bits of diamonds in his hair. The water just beads up on his hair. And in the sun, it sparkles. That's not something for someone to laugh at all your hair is beating up how how stupid the water beads up on someone's hair and this is something to laugh about like what's funny about that why so find the beauty in yourself regardless of who wants to laugh at it because a lot of times people that laugh at it you see them going to go tan though the people that's laughing at your lips are going secretly getting some Botox, getting that lip balm that makes their lips plump up. They laugh and or they hate black people, but then you see they want the music, the sound. So understand that that type of thing is hatred. Whether it's coming from another race, whether it's your same race, whether it's your own people calling you dark, black, whatever, ugly. Because those same individuals that do it, that cry racism, will do worse thing to themselves. The word, the N-word is used a lot more among black people, black Americans specifically, I can say for a fact, more than a racist, racist. But God makes no mistakes. He loves us. He created us. I'm not saying we're better. I don't get into that thing of we are gods and all these different things. And we're the originals. I don't get into all of that. Because that stuff is all about saying that you are higher and better than others. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He died for everybody. So we're not to elevate ourselves over anyone. But what I will say is there's definitely something here 
about the brown skin, the black skin, the dark skin, the extra melanin skin, because there's so much animosity towards people who are innocent, who have not done nothing wrong. And anybody who think that they're better than you just because their skin is lighter, they're absolutely, they're absolutely ignorant. Just because you're lighter, you think you're better. Just because you have more money, you think you're better. And I always tell people, some individuals that have money or European Caucasians, oh, we're more civilized. No, no, no. What happened was things were stolen. Look at the history. So if you can, if you subdued people and you killed them, you took their stuff, you took their resources and made yourself rich off of the gold of their land. You made yourself rich off of their resources and you forced them to be slaves and you, you did not allow them to learn anything. You gave yourself a pretty good head start. So while it looks as if you're doing better, if you follow the trail of the wealth and the money, it'll go back to stolen property, stolen lands, and lots of murders. Am I saying that white people got to walk around being sorry for things they didn't do? No. But understand, no one is better than anybody else. Let us appreciate one another. Appreciate who we are. God makes no mistakes. Love yourself, brown people. Respect one another. Speak kindly to one another. Because you can't expect anybody to treat you any differently and you don't treat yourselves right. Stop making excuses. Stop being victims. Stop going into this woke, we're going to overcome ah, black thing going on. Because a lot of that, while it is good, you find that there's bits of hatred and racism in there. And being a victim and not being accountable. You broke the plate. And if, if a white person tell you broke the plate, they're racist. Guys, that is absolute ignorance. You broke the plate. You broke the plate. You got to deal with the consequences for that. It has none to do with your color. Let's grow together. All right, guys. God bless.